Well, it's a busy morning at the boat ramp here in Queenscliff, Victoria, at the bottom end of Port Phillip Bay. And my dad always said, Paul, if you can't look like an AFL footballer, at least dress like one. Now, I'm no squid scientist, but I reckon I look like one. I'm rocking this gig. Now, speaking of squid scientists, Dr. Corey Green, did you actually go to university for four years and study suffering cephalopods? Certainly did, Paul. Yes, it was a good time. I had fun. So does that mean you're the sort of bloke that you try to ignore at a dinner party? That's me. <laughs> Now, how long have you been studying down here at Queenscliff? Uh, around about four years to do my PhD and then an extra two years looking at calamari in Port Phillip Bay. Now this is an arrow squid, today we're chasing calamari. That's right. What is the plan of attack? Apart from catching them, what are we going to do then? After we catch them, we'll put some, uh, some special tags in them to try to track them around the bay. Sensational. So we can actually put a tag in a squid and then we're going to see where it swims. That's exactly right. What part of eating the squid fits in there? None, sorry. I'm not big on this science gig. It's a good one too, mate. I tell you what, for a scientist, you can fish. <laughs> oh, he's a nice calamari. That's a beautiful squid, mate. Now, this is the fun part. I'll just keep bringing him in. And I'll just lead him up a little bit. He's just hooked. That's a good one. Oh, let him go, let, let him, him go. go. Let him go, yep, no <laughs> rush. No rush, he's just got rid of his ink. Just bring him up nice and slow. It's hard with these long rods. I'm just gonna lead him, and if he goes, I let go. Like that. Beautiful. Well that is done. what you call doing it for science. <laughs> Come over and have a closer look. So while you guys have been coming a bit closer, Corey, you've been setting this contraption up. What is it? That's just a holding facility for our squid just prior to uh, tagging it. So it's actually an SHF, a squid holding facility. That is, Look technically. that up on the scientific website. <laughs> so we're going to put this squid in there and keep fishing. That's right. Great Try to work. catch a few more. Mate, right, you're in charge, so I'll just lift him over towards you and put him put in him there. there. The great thing about squid jigs, they don't actually have barbs on their hooks, so you can just flick them out like so. He'll let go, and then he'll just go for a nice little swim. Oh, that could have been very ugly for you, Corey. <laughs> so, A69. A69. Dash 1303. Yep. Are they this Saturday night's test? I don't know. <laughs> That's, they could be. Oh, could use them. <laughs> so I'm just confirming the, the tag numbers and everything's all right. So 24713, that's what 24713. we've got. 24713. That's what we've got on our tag. Yep. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, let's get this slippery little sucker in the boat. You pull the net over. I'll uh, try and net it better the second time I did the first. And you really do love your squid, don't you? We need to look after this guy because what he provides for science could just be unbelievable, couldn't it? It could. Okay. Nice and gentle. Straight, straight into this bucket. Straight into the bucket, Paul. Now, just explain what is in this bucket. You put something in there, some chemicals or something before. That's right. I've got some solution called magnesium chloride, and it, and it basically all it does is is uh, sends it to, to sleep. It's an anaesthetic that will be applied to it, and it will uh, be there for surgery. How's the colours on that calamari? Isn't it amazing they, the way they can change to their That's environment? Right. Yeah, they certainly they certainly are a beautiful animal. Well, we'll just wait for this little boy or girl to go to sleep, and then it's time to operate. What I'll get you to do is I'll bring it up, hold it upside down. You hold the head end. Yep. Now I'll get my tag. Oh! oh. Did I mention the Calamari sepia toothus australis has a directional funnel? Cameraman says no. Let's get on with the serious business, right. mate. So what are we doing first? So we've got their tag. Yep. I'm just going to insert it underneath here. Yep. Straight through like that. And you want an orange thing which is here somewhere. I think the squid, here is this. That goes on next. That goes on next. That little tag we put in there is an acoustic tag. What's it worth? Uh, about $350. No way. Science is expensive, let me just tell you that. Crimp. Now this is very slimy, tiny work. So we're doing our best to show you at home. So put the tag in, then a washer, and then a little crimp. The crimp is under the camera there. How many calamari have you actually tagged so far with this uh, method? We've done about a dozen, and we've got another dozen to go. Beautiful. Get rid of that. So now. we're just going to give it the antibiotic, Paul. 
All right, that's straight in there. So that, that helps to heal the operation? That helps to heal. And we'll also get a dart tag. Now, can you explain a dart tag, please? Yeah, this is just a, an identification tag. It's got the phone number of Fisheries Victoria on it. So if you find a squid or catch a squid that's got one of these tags in it, ring the number and it'll help us a lot with our science work. There you go. So just watch your hand there and I'll go straight through here. This is very slimy work. Tags and in. There's our tag. And now we'll go straight over into the net pool. So, so I pick the squid could, up. Yep, pick the squid up. Yep. And put it straight into the net here. Nice and gentle. Yep, straight in. Good. Now, the idea here is we can check the recovery of the squid. That's right. And see if he's swimming. That's right. And well, that might take some time, might take 10 minutes or so. So we'll just wait until he comes around and then we'll release him. Okay, Paul, so we've uh, attached the tag to the, the squid and we're just using this uh, acoustic receiver to uh, check that the tag is working. And when it, the squid is recovered, we'll release it back into the bay to swim freely. It's been a long time since I've seen a Vemco ultrasonic telemetry and tracking receiver Turbo 3000. That's probably the first and only one you've seen, Paul. <laughs> I'm sort of hoping so. <laughs> yeah. So we have a number of receivers dotted around Port Phillip Bay and whenever a squid comes within 400 metres of these receivers it will tell us, it will uh, log the tag number, the date that was uh, tagged and the time that was tagged and we can plot that over time to see where the squid have gone. So this right now is really just checking that tag's working? That's right. But if we release this squid we could try and follow it? We can. And how close would we have to stay in range to get an idea of where it's going? Yeah, around, around 300, 400 metres. Wow, so we could actually see if the squid goes to the bottom and dies, That's or if right. it wanders off and goes and hides in the grass and takes a different route. Exactly. Now, and it's swimming beautifully. Oh, I can feel that tag under there. So pull that net out of the way. It's ready to go. All right, look at that. And away it goes. What a cool cephalopod. Hey, that's my underwater camera, mate. Now he's coming back to me. He's just hanging in the current. And, mate, your job, six years of your life, has culminated in this moment. How does it make that's you right. feel? That's right. It's very rewarding. Look, he's just hanging around saying thanks for, thanks for your work. What we're going to do, we're actually going to put the monitor in the water. What's it called? The Turbo 3000? Yeah, it's an acoustic receiver. And we'll follow this guy and see if we can actually keep an eye on it. That's right. This is going to be too cool for school. He's just hanging. This is unbelievable stuff. Now, when you saw the start of the show and you thought, oh, target species squid, they're in Victoria, I bet a few people went, eh. well, how cool is this? Back to Port Phillip Bay in a minute, but I wanted to try and show you a really big calamari. So I jumped on a plane, drove about 100 miles on a boat, and now I'm at Pearson Island, South Australia, and I know there are some very big calamari here. So what I'm doing, I'm working in an area of about 10 metres depth wise, got my Ozuri squid jig, I'm just gonna try and bounce that through the water column like we've talked about, and see if I can't find one of these denizens from the deep. Judging by the bend in my little rod, ooh, and those big thumping pulses, I reckon I've hooked myself a really nice calamari. They're really, really intelligent creatures, even though sometimes they do really dumb things, like come back and grab your jig just after they've fallen off. But as far as invertebrates go, and invertebrates mean they have no bones, they are one of the largest and one of the most intelligent. Now, speaking of large, isn't it amazing we know more about the moon than we know about our oceans on the planet, and they cover two thirds of our planet. And down there somewhere, some of the biggest squid you could ever imagine. They're called colossal squid. And when you see them on YouTube in pictures, they are mind blowing, 50, 60 feet long. And then you get those whales come up, the sperm whales, and they've got sucker holes on the side of their face the size of a dinner plate. Now, if you imagine how big a squid must be that has a single sucker the size of a dinner plate, it'd be scary. And I don't think there's quite enough chips to cover that squid. Now, here comes my calamari. Look at the size of this thing. It is just a beauty, and that jig is right on the top of his head, which means I was working it pretty well as he's come over and tried to nail it. I'm going to bend down and try and grab this guy. It's a corking squid. I've got to say, big calamari, they're a lot of fun. Now, this is where it can all go pear-shaped very, very quickly. So we'll just see how we go. 
I'm gonna get down. Don't squirt me, please, my friend. Look at that. Come on, mate. I'll let you. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that for a squid. And I actually used his suckers against him there. That's his candle. I stuck my hand out and he just grabbed onto my hand. Now I'll try and grab him the right way. There you go. Oh, look at that. What an incredible specimen of a southern calamari. That Yozuri jig right in the top there. And you see those two long tentacles hanging there. They're called these candles. And you can actually extend them out and grab his prey. He has 10 tentacles in full. He has the two long ones and eight small ones. So that's how the big ones roll. Back to Victoria. Back to acoustic tagging. I wonder if this guy might up in Port Phillip Bay one day. So how does this work, Corey? Well, this is a, a directional hydrophone, it's called. And what I'm doing is actually tracking that squid that we just released. So it's giving me signals through the receiver here. So at this stage, I think he's over that way, Paul. Beautiful. So basically, it's only gone 50 metres, now it's coming back again. That's right. Would you assume that's what they do, just work on these weed yeah, patches? Yeah, just work around the different weed patches, going from weed patch to weed patch over the sand. Stay pretty hidden. Looking for someone to spend Valentine's Day Valentine's with. Valentine's Day or even for a good feed. Pretty impressive looking building here, mate. Yeah, it's pretty good with the grass on the roof. Absolutely, uh, very environmentally friendly. Now, we've got the bucket of squid. Yeah. We're going to go inside. You're That's going to uh, do a few little scientific experiments. Yeah, we'll dissect them and, and learn a bit more about them. I'm not au okay fait with big words, but I think we're going to cut them up. So this is one of the calamari we caught this morning off Queenscliff. Had a pretty good session in the end. We thought it was important to get back here into the lab and do what Corey does for a living. Now, you bring these things back, you dissect them, and that teaches you more about the species? Exactly. We'll find out what sex it is and what sort of reproductive condition it is in. Now, my boy Jet, the thing that fascinates him the most about squid is that they've got a beak like a cockatoo. Yeah, they Can you show us have. that? That's right. So they use the tentacles to bring food towards their mouth. And here, just inside the mouth, we have a beak, which is just like a cockatoo. Now, the reason it's shaped the way it is, is because it needs to cut uh, small amounts of food uh, from its prey and to go down through its esophagus. And it needs a small amount of food because the brain is like a donut, where the throat passes right through the middle of the brain. So any big bit of food, it just can't swallow it. So, all that's left to do, mate, measure it. Flip it open and let's have a look at the gory bits. All right, no problem. So we just measure it from the tip of the tail out to this part of the, the squid and we can see that the mantle length is 26 centimetres. So that's not a bad size squid for around here, Paul. Mate, that is a fantastic squid no matter where you go. And the thing that I want to teach people about squid, when you go squidding, they are all very edible. See these bits here? They are some of the best eating on a calamari ever. Just cut them up, throw them in a pan, spin them around, bit of chilli. Oh my goodness me, it isn't just the squid rings that taste good. Now I can see some green bits hiding in there, mate. Yeah, there's all sorts of things going on in here. So this structure down this side and this side, what are they, mate? They're the gills of the squid. They've got one on either side, and attached to the gill is a heart. So we've got one heart here, another one here, yep. and we've got a third heart underneath here which pumps the blood around the body. That is staggering. Now, this bit here, it looks like mother of pearl. What is the job of that? That is actually our worst nightmare. That is our squid ink right inside there. Handy. And you think there's still some in there? Well, let's have a look and find out. Oh! <laughs> there we go. And isn't that amazing? If you're cleaning a squid at home, try not to break the ink sack because that makes a mess. If you can cut that out, get the innards out without breaking it, it means you've got nice, white, clean calamari without having to worry about all that mess. 